Oh, hi everyone. Thank you for joining me for the fifth installment of the discipleship strategy. This session is going to be all about the church. So we're going to be looking at what it means to be a church, but also how and why we should be serving in our church so that we don't just take what we can. We shouldn't just be consumers at church, but we are wanting to get involved, to get stuck in and to serve in church. But I think we often have a sort of rather narrow perspective on what it means to be a church. Perhaps we think of the church as just the church in Baglan or the surrounding areas. Maybe if you've got a broader perspective, you think of the church in Wales in the United Kingdom. But there is a global church and not just now, but past, present and future. Those who have gone before us and those who will come after us. So we need to remember that when we're talking about church, we are talking about a global church. And what I love in scripture, I absolutely love this, is that when God describes his church, one of the things, one of the images he uses to describe us is the bride of Christ. It's an absolutely incredible picture that we are the bride of Christ. Think of a husband and his wife. The husband absolutely adores his wife. He'll do anything for her. She is his treasured possession. And here we're seeing the church described as the bride of Christ. What an incredible image it is. Listen to what it says in Isaiah 62, verses 2 to 4. It says, you shall be, that is us, we, that is the church, you shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no longer be termed forsaken and your land shall no more be termed desolate. Church, grab this next bit and hold on to it. It says, but you shall be called, my delight is in her. Do we sometimes think that God just tolerates us, that he puts up with us? Sometimes we do, but what this verse is saying is that Christ delights over his church. He delights over us. We are his bride, his treasured possession. We are the reason that Jesus went to the cross to purchase for himself a bride. And he is our bridegroom. He endured the agony, the humiliation of the cross so that he could redeem us, so that we could become his treasured possession. There's nothing that we've done to make us beautiful as his church, but it's all because of what Christ has done for us. And he looked ahead to that incredible wedding banquet that is to come, where we will be united to him forever. Listen to what it says in Ephesians chapter 12, verse 2. For the joy that was set before him. So that's Jesus looking ahead to that wedding banquet, to that day when him and his church would be united forever. For the joy that was set before him, Christ endured the cross, despising the shame, and is now seated at the right hand of the throne of God. And let's just have a little look in Revelation where it talks about this incredible wedding banquet that is to come between Christ and his church. I'm just going to read a little bit from Revelation 19. Let us rejoice. And exult and give him the glory for the marriage of the lamb has come and his bride that is us guys that is us has made herself ready it was granted her to clothe herself with fine linen bright and pure and then it says write this blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the lamb that is us we are invited if we are in Christ to come to this incredible marriage supper that is to come where we will be united to Christ for all eternity. So guys as a church just remember who we are. We are the bride of Christ and he delights over us. If we get this it's going to have a massive impact on how we live as church, how we serve as church, how we interact with other people in church because we get the privilege therefore of being able to serve the bride of Christ. Not only are we the bride of Christ, but we get to serve others in the church. So therefore, as disciples, we really need to get stuck into serving and caring for our local church. 
church members can't just be consumers. We've got to get involved. We've got to get stuck in. We've got to have a sense of ownership within it. We are called to serve one another. Jesus illustrates this in his life when he got down on his knees and washed his disciples' feet, serving one another. And Paul writes that we must be devoted to one another in brotherly love in Romans 12 verse 10. And Jesus said that the greatest among you will be your servant. So as part of church life, when we see who we are in Christ, we have to serve one another, not out of any sense of duty or obligation, but it's an utter privilege to be able to do so because of who we are in Jesus. The songwriter Graham Kendrick once wrote these lyrics and they're so relevant to this. It says, so let us learn how to serve and in our lives enthrone him, each other's needs to prefer. For it is Christ we're serving. This is our God, the servant king. He calls us now to follow him. To bring our lives as a daily offering of worship to the servant king. We need to lay down our gifts, our talents, everything that we have in our lives to help build up Christ's church. And what a privilege it is to be able to do so. So let's just look at what the Bible says about why we should be using our gifts and talents for the church. Well, firstly, God is the giver of any gift or any talent that you possess. We can look this up in James 1 verse 17 or John 3 27, but God is the giver of all the gifts that you have in the first place. You know, that's why we have to lay down our gifts and talents for the church, because they aren't ours to start with. And one day we see in scripture in Matthew 25, 14 through to 30, that one day we're going to give an account for how we've used our gifts, for how we've used our talents. So every gift, every sort of skill or talent that you've had, one day you will have to give an account for how you've used it. So we need to be people that want to lay down these gifts and talents and, uh, for the good of the church. So at this point, I just want us to pause for a second and reflect on how we use our gifts and our talents and our money and all sorts of things for the advancement of Christ's church. On the screen are going to be 10 statements, two lots of five. And what I want you to do is pause the video, work through the 10 statements, and then score yourself one to five, where one is never and five is always. So to give you an example, the first one says, I understand my spiritual gifts and use those gifts to serve others. So if you never do that, that would be a one. But if you totally understand your spiritual gifts and you're constantly using them, uh, for serving others, then that would be five and so on. So just take some time now to work your way through these 10 statements and give yourself a score, but then reflect on the score. What, what, do, you, what do those numbers mean? What sort of changes perhaps do you want to implement as a consequence of having gone through that? But as we then close the video, it's really important that we undergo some reflective questions where we ponder some of the things that we've looked at and either on your own if you're working through this individually or if you're working through it in a group have a discussion about these questions so the first one is reflect on the truth that the church is the bride of christ that's what we were talking about at the beginning if we grasp that the church is the bride of christ what perspective does that give us how would that change our perspective of who the church is reflect on the incredible truth that christ loved the church so much that he gave himself for her through his death on the cross. How does that change your view of what church is? And then some practical questions. Do you attend church regularly? Is it a big deal in your life? Have you become a member of the church? Church membership is important. You get to have a say in how things are run and so on. So if you've been coming to the church for a while and you're not a member, you should chat to myself or any of the other leaders about that. Really important. Are you committed to a house group? Church is not just on a Sunday. We have seven or eight different house groups throughout the week. I'll put a list of them on the screen as you're listening to me now. So are you committed to a house group? And if not, you know, I would really recommend just getting stuck into one. They are great, honestly. 
really, really important. And this next one is really important. Is serving in church a priority in your life? Do you, do you view it as important? And do you have any gifts and talents that you're currently not using for the church? Maybe you're a musician and you've not got involved with the band. Maybe you feel you've got a gift in teaching or speaking. If you've got any gifts or talents and you want to explore them further, come and have a chat with myself or Neil or any of the other leaders and we would love to have that conversation with you. Are there any existing ministries that are going on in the church at the moment that you'd like to get involved with? I'll put a list of it on the screen now and you have a look see what we do in church. And it would be great if you want to get involved in serving in any of these ministries. We constantly need volunteers to help things run. Uh, could your gifts and talents be used to establish new ministries in the church? So we've got this list here of things that are currently going on, but do you have any ideas? Anything that you'd like to get started in church? Just let us know. And then what, if anything, is holding you back from serving in church? If you're not getting stuck in, what sort of factors are stopping you? And we'll, we, if you want to have a chat to us about that, we'd love to chat to you about it, pray with you, uh, that sort of thing. But we would love it, absolutely love it, if you wanted to get more and more stuck in to church here in Baglan. So I just thought we'd close the video in a time of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that as a church, we are your bride. We are the bride of Christ. What an incredible privilege that is to be your bride. Lord, that you treasure us, you value us so much that you went to the cross to redeem us, to purchase us. When we grasp that, what a different perspective we'll have on church. That we will want to love our brothers and sisters in Christ more. That we'll want to serve one another with that attitude that you had when you got down and you washed your disciples' feet. Help us to be people who do that, who want to serve one another and build up the church. And I pray, Lord, if there's anyone out there at the moment who is wondering how they can get stuck into church, that you'd open the right doors for them, that you'd put it on their heart where they're to go so that they can serve you more effectively. And Lord, we also pray for all the existing ministries in church, that you'd grow them, strengthen them, embolden them for the work that is still to come. And we ask these things in your mighty name. Amen.